Okay, well, ha- thank you very much for joining me today, Sarah, for the uh, podcast for Taste Green. Um, first of all, I'd like to know what were your impressions for, of working on the Secret Seas series? When I first joined the series, um, I was one of the last of the production team to be brought in, and everybody was so enthusiastic. There were just so many stories out there, and it, it felt like it was going to be a, you know, a really uh, great series because you know, everybody was really passionate about it on the production team and all the people we were contacting and talking to had so many great ideas. Um, you know, everybody got a really good feeling about it. And what do you hope would be the impact of the series? Because I have to say, having watched it, I think it's absolutely remarkable. Just remarkable. Well, um, personally, I hope the impact would be to um, get more people maybe into diving or snorkeling or even just to sort of understand and appreciate the sort of wonderful world that is underwater, the, you know, the amazing marine life, all the history and how it influences people's lives so that with sort of greater appreciation and understanding will, will hopefully sort of come more drive to sort of help conserve the marine world um, and uh, you know, sort of, uh, the, the sort of traditional industries that go with it as well as the marine life and the sort of heritage that's sort of hidden beneath it um you know as, as a program we wanted to sort of broaden people's you know really to amaze people and surprise people at what's under there and um i you know i really do hope hope it did that and then with the the, the british sub aqua club also then uh wanting to help uh promote the program by um using sort of the clips and people's enjoyment of it afterwards uh, to, to try and get people people diving, which is you know, always a, a good thing, having people um, enjoy our wonderful underwater world. Uh, absolutely, yes. I thought seeing the section, for example, of the, uh, the uh, seahorses and then the, with oh. the scallops coming through the water, I thought that it, was, it was heartbreakingly beautiful. It is. It's really sweet. Some of the stuff you see under the water, you know, if you're you're sort of waiting before you come up to the surface after diving on a wreck and you have a, a pod of porpoise or dolphin come past you or you're on the boat, um, you know, or even on the shore, you can see sort of minke whales, particularly in Scotland, coming coming and sort of going to where the bait balls are and the gannets diving. And, you know, there's so much on the surface and under the water that's just sort of stunning. Uh, how did you personally get involved in diving, Sarah? I've always, I've always loved the water. I used to do a lot of sort of... Um, kayaking and canoeing when I was younger and snorkeling and on holidays and around the UK and it just seemed natural that I you know I, I, when I swam I was always underwater anyway it just seemed natural that I started diving and then quite quite quickly um, I started doing more adventurous diving and running sort of expeditions like ice diving in Norway and then at university I very quickly became the sort of one of the only instructors or and the diving officer sort of in charge of the, the diving club at the university um, as I was rapidly building up lots of experience. And I believe you are now working for the BBC. Uh, so I, uh, does that mean that you're involved in other media production work? Sure. I mean, I, I, um, I sort of I mainly started with BBC as the uh, scuba diving instructor on Blue Peter for one of their presenters. Um, then I worked with Britain's Secret Seas, and I work because my my background is science, and although my passion and hobbies are outdoors, BBC's allowed me to sort of combine that sort of. With um, Horizon, I've been able to use sort of outdoor skills on that when when we've been sort of looking at the reintroduction of predators or or just sort of being able to coordinate travelling and logistics um, from sort of expedition experience. It's quite easy to translate that into uh, program production. Um, I'm working on a, a BBC Four science series at the moment, and I'm hoping to be working on a another sort of more outdoor-based science series. Um, after this one, so that should be quite exciting. I was going to say, um, uh, you, you've already mentioned how you got involved in the in the Secret Sea series, but for for future plans, presumably there will be, or there may be other things to do with Secret Seas or other similar types of uh, types yeah. of programs. Yeah, well, we, I didn't actually apply for to work on Britain's Secret Seas. My my CV had actually been. I was living in Scotland. My CV had just been passed down to BBC in London, and um, I just sort of got a call to ask if I'd be interested it's because they wanted people with a knowledge of um, UK diving and a good uh, level of diving experience and obviously I didn't say no um, and y- yes I think they're hoping you know I, in uh, BBC in London are definitely already making more underwater programs um, 
sort of quite quite big budget ones, and then of course Coast and uh, other programs have sort of bits of diving put into them. And I think um, I think uh, obviously the, you know the NHU in Bristol have always been very strong on diving, but I think diving um, and around the UK is, is going to be in more and more programs as people realise how wonderful it is and it's sort of the amazing stuff you can see even in the UK. Is is there a particular project you would like to see produced or be involved in? Um, I I think on TV we need more programs like uh, Hugh's Fish Fight because you know it has great stories, it's fun to watch, but actually it it has a a good message with it that things aren't right out there, but we can make a difference, we can change things, and I think sometimes TV is too too nervous to put such a strong message in TV because I think it'll it'll put people off the program. But I think Hughes Fish Fight really showed actually people people want to help and they want to be involved and uh, you know I, I think television is, is a perfect medium to really raise awareness and issues and motivate people to do something about it um, just from what has been one of your greatest influences or inspirations whether for diving or any other aspect of your life but perhaps for diving in particular I don't know if there's been any one person I mean there have been some and great people I've, I've worked with in diving, um, such as uh, Claire Petty, who, who lives in Fife. She was the national diving officer for the British Dive Club and then became a chairperson. And all of that's quite rare to actually have females do that, as well as holding down a full-time job at the University of St Andrews, sort of within marine biology and um, and family. So you know, knowing that you you, you, know, you can do it all if you're obviously very organized and determined and then some great produ- series producers I've worked with as well showing you know you can you can um, be a female and get to the higher levels within production because it isn't that common um, but mainly my, my main influence has been people telling me I'm not going to be able to do things or I can't do things and then of course um, I, I just have to go and do it like uh, when I very first started diving I wanted to ice dive people sort of uh, laughed at that, so I I didn't just go and learn to ice dive. I organised an expedition within the Arctic Circle in Norway to ice dive. Um, and I, I'd say that's mainly been my my influence throughout life. Well, we're certainly very proud that you've got strong connections with the Fife Tayside area and have uh, migrated down to working for the BBC. Um, but what would be one of your favourite places in the North Sea region? I know you probably have many, but uh, what would be one of them? <laughs> I'd say I, I have lived up here a long time. It must be at least. 13 years now and I've I have dived a lot particularly you know the east coast because I did a lot of my study there so it was something I could do in the evening and the weekend and it's so accessible I would say one of my favorite dives um, and areas that is then also accessible to anybody from snorkeling or diving or just uh, looking in the rock pools would be around Fife Ness in Crail Um, although last year there was a bit of um, a sad incident that occurred there it's still it's one of the most beautiful sites. You get do- you get the uh, seals from the Isle of May coming over to play in the bay, which you often see. You get the porpoises coming along. Um, and in one or two metres, you can see so many different marine species. So, you know, wh- whether that, like, say, in rock pools or even just snorkelling or diving, you can see lots of different anemones, different fish, you know, different types of crabs. It's just such a, a pretty sight to, to go to. And it's, it's so easy because you, you literally you park your car and it's just a few steps. You're in the water, um, and it's it's you know really really beautiful. Sarah, thank you for that vote of confidence in in this uh, this part of Scotland, the east coast, the Fife area, Fife Dayside area. Um, can I just say thank you very much indeed for your time today, Sarah? That's no problem. Thank you very much, and uh, good luck with all your future projects. Thank you, um, Sarah. Can you hang on the line for just a second? I'm just going to check sure. for for one moment that it's there. Okay.